Hello everyone and welcome back to that one playthrough of Kerbal Space Program. I am Kyle once again and you join us right where I said we'd leave off building a brand new aeroplane that's gonna allow us to do some contracts at very high speed. Yes, this is the F1 Wasp named after stuff that's got F and then a number because that's what airplanes are typically named after when it comes to really fast type things. I don't know, I'm just sticking to the nomenclature of the wasp being a bug slash insect like our ladybug and the bumblebee so far. So this is just the next iteration of something and it's supposed to go fast and it looks cool. So it's a wasp, okay? Deal with it. All right, now this is not a science vehicle, so I don't have to worry about testing any of the uh, instruments. There's nothing we need to collect. I do need to uh, kind of fire up the engines here a little bit. There we go. We'll get the uh, brakes released and this should be pretty stable. I have admittedly in the back end, uh, not recording, done some testing on some similar vehicles. And by similar, I mean the first iterations of this uh, this amazing craft meant to go at high speeds. We'll see if we can get her off the ground. There it is. And this is not good. This is not good. This is not good. This is not good. Okay, hold on a sec here. Let's just pause for one moment before everyone freaks out and dies. Jebediah is in the cockpit and he is still alive. I need to very quickly bring the engine thrust down to zero. Do that right away. And then slide. Okay, the only thing I can think of is that our center of lift is way too close to our center of mass, and that's what caused it to be a little too uh, flippy de dippity Let's try just shifting the wings back a little bit. Not too far, right about, uh, right about there, so it's at least outside the center of mass. Maybe that will help us stay a little bit more directionally oriented. We're gonna have to EVA him if things blow up uh, at higher altitudes and have him try to quote-unquote eject. Uh, but let's, uh, let's hope that this thing flies a little bit better this time around, see if we can get her off the ground a little more comfortably. Maybe accelerate down the runway a little bit uh, slower compared to the last time. Might be a little bit safer. Yeah, let's see if we can get a uh, nice comfortable takeoff. Oh, whoop. Okay, okay, it is. Okay, it's it's handling better. It's got a lot of wobble. I don't, maybe I don't have good enough elevons. Thought I had good enough elevons. Maybe I don't. Oh, and look at that. Just right off the bat, we get a nice, beautiful failure of one of our tail fins. Oh, I just have nothing good to say right now. All right, let's at the very least try to get this to a comfortable altitude, because the goal is going to be to do some high-speed stuff at a very high altitude. Okay, so we have two things we're going to try and do. We're going to try and fly between 2,500 meters and 20,000 meters and hit Mach 2. The other thing is we have to fly an airplane to 10,000 meters, so we can do both of those very easily. And then we also have to fly an airplane to 2,500 meters, then fly for 200 seconds. Wait, where did that go? Fly for 200 seconds at Mach 1. So, right now we're at 2,500, so if we kind of level off, um, fly up to 2,500, okay, and then we're gonna, oh geez, yeah, this thing is, uh, not liking, not liking the control here thus far. We're gonna crank the velocity up, because I think if we hit Mach 1, then it will start counting down the time frame here for 200 seconds. Ah, uh, yes, the beautiful ice caps of Kerbin at the equator, nothing quite like it anywhere in the world or solar system for that matter. Okay, we have achieved Mach 1. I'm gonna bring our engines down a little bit because this is just gonna be about maintaining not too crazy a speed here. And we gotta do this for another three minutes. Oh, what fun. Oh, great, we got two tail fins out now. Okay, well, our yaw control is basically gone to crap. All right, here we go, five seconds remaining. We have been able to maintain Mach 1 very comfortably. We are starting to slow down a little bit, but we're still at 400 meters per second. And we did it. Okay, so that's one complete. Check the box. Honestly, that was probably the harder one. Okay, we got to fly in a plane to an altitude of 10,000 meters. That should be pretty easy. Let's... Oh gosh, oh gosh. The control on this is, is not, not fun. Okay, let's just casually gain some altitude. Oh, and now we've lost an engine as well. Well, this is just freaking fabulous. Okay, we did get to 10,000 meters. That's good. Let's considerably slow this thing down because, uh, well, two things. One, we've completed two of our contracts and we are quite a distance away from the KSC now. 
I'm gonna slow it down. All right, well, we'll go ahead and take the 20 grand for the contract on 10,000 meters, and then 15 grand on 2,500 meters Mach 1, 200 seconds. We've slowed down considerably. I'm gonna see if I can casually turn this thing around. Oh, that is some serious maneuverability. Hopefully don't we don't stall this thing. At this point, the severe lack of control is kind of scaring me. Oh yeah, this thing is not not in a fun predicament right now. Okay, come on. You can do it. I believe in you. Come on, Jed. You are the test pilot of all test pilots. Okay, we're going to crank the speed back up. We need for this contract to just be at 2,500 meters. So as long as we can maintain pretty much level flight here. Okay, let's level off. Now the goal here is Mach 2. At the very least, we're going to go back to the KSC. Now, the problem here is we need to have less than 10 meters per second of vertical. We need to fly faster than 686 meters per second, which with two engines now, I don't think is going to be possible. Okay, well, even with three active engines thrusting here, I don't think we've got enough power to hit Mach 2. But that's okay. Back to the drawing board. We've got two contracts down here. We can move on to some other things in the meantime. All right, now all of our tail fins have, have stuck configurations. So... We now have no yaw control, which is not good. Um, I don't know if I can land this thing. And I do have collisions on, on the scatterer stuff for parallax mods, so it's not like I can just land in a field and hope that I don't hit a tree. That could be bad, too. Okay, I think I've got a pretty good approach. I'm coming in on one engine. I shut off the two side ones. Oh, it's looking pretty good so far. I just got to keep enough altitude to kind of get to the runway and then shut the engine off engines are off engines are off and touchdown oh oh geez oh gee uh oh uh oh oh not into the field not into the field not into the field hit the brakes hit the brakes hit the brakes hit the brakes ah! come on you can do it oh i think i think we're okay i think we're gonna be okay just yeah as long as we don't hit palm trees or something like that yeah okay cool all right, so first test of our super high-speed plane, uh, semi-success. Overall, um, you know, still needs some control and hopefully things don't break as much the next time. That's right, we're going to move right into some other contracts we've got lined up for Minmus, of all places, to finish out our little probe contract for that region of space. This is Candy Mountain, a lovely little probe that's going to go to Minmus itself. Let's go ahead and get it fired up here and I'll explain what else is going on here. Oh, got it. There we go. Full throttle up in the upward direction. Perfect. Okay. So Candy Mountain is going to do some altimetry scans of Minmus as well as a multi-spectral scan, which is going to give us the biomes of the area. This is a, kind of an experimental rocket. It's got the same walrus engine on the bottom that we used in the last episode for the first time that we tested. So it should be relatively uh, cooperative for us, but... Uh, you know, time will tell how that uh, kind of stuff ends up handling. I'm going to go ahead and let it start gravity turning. I think it should be okay. We'll get a booster separation here really shortly. Should look pretty cool. There we go. Put some sepatrons on that so it worked out a little bit better. And then, yeah, this should be a plenty strong engine. Actually, in fact, um, it, uh, we could probably get it turning a little bit more. Hopefully it should have the control to do so. Because I would rather us start to get some horizontal velocities going. Getting a lot of altitude. Don't need as much altitude. Please do more horizontaling. Okay, there we go. A lot more horizontal trajectory. Should, uh, shouldn't have wasted too much efficiency there, but uh, pro pro probably did for the long term. Alright, and then we're about to hitch stage separation here momentarily burn out and then we get to see the cheetah engine for the first time which apparently is not cooperating with the waterfall mod because it's not doing a cool engine expansion so we get the lame vanilla engine exhaust whatever we'll move on i can get over it uh, i can go ahead and get rid of this because we are out of the atmosphere and we can see our lovely little probe oh that is some cool sexy looking satellite right there all right and this thing i want to make sure keeps burning it's super efficient but it doesn't have a ton of thrust its thrust to weight right now is uh, 1.4 so to make sure this thing doesn't fall out of the sky and we continue to maintain velocity, I'm going to keep it relatively horizontal, but not too far so that we can maintain uh, with our active prograde marker. Boop. I think we might be okay to just try and make a maneuver node. All right, perfect. Yep. Yeah. Just a one minute burn, so this should be pretty easy to do. And bada bing, bada boom. Nice and uh, nice and secure here. Okay, we're going to do a couple things real quick. We're going to decouple. And then we're going to immediately switch to the other side, which I have placed a probe core on so that we can no longer leave 
uh, things in orbit that I don't want them to be in orbit. So we're gonna, well, let's not go too far. Well, we can go past it. That way we don't uh, burn and hit our vehicle there. And then we'll kind of line up retrograde. This is not gonna be recoverable. There's no parachutes on it, but uh, at the very least, I would like to make sure that we don't leave too much debris in space anymore. And then just as planned, this thing gets to plummet into the atmosphere, burn up into oblivion and not leave trash anywhere in space, but maybe on whatever this small island is. Oh, would you look at that? Some of, some of it's actually surviving. Well, that's cool. That's got the probe core inside that little pocket there, so it actually probably brings back a good amount of the value for me. All right, now returning to the Candy Mountain, we need to set our target to be Minmus. I don't know if we will be able to do this on this current orbit, this current orbit of Minmus, that is. Actually, I'm having an accidental encounter with the moon. I'm wondering if I can use the moon to slightly deflect me up to have a good encounter with Minmus, because that's like lined up, but it's the displacement of the inclination that makes it not lined up. So I'm wondering, wondering if I can do that, but have another maneuver. Yeah, that we change the inclination slightly here, and then as such, we get the Minmus encounter. That is how we would do it right there. Nice. So that way we get like a Mooner assist. Oh, didn't even plan for this and it came out awesome. Well, this, this, this maneuver is actually coming up really fast. In fact, I have to burn in less, well, about a minute, a little more than a minute. Sorry, I have to burn in less than a minute. Got 15 seconds, in fact. Make sure thrust is up. I need to be able to stage this engine when this happens. Three, two, one, burn. Okay, that is pretty spot on there. Now let's redo the node in the middle, 30 meters per second, so that we basically pass underneath the moon, and then it's gonna slingshot us just slightly upward enough to line up with Minmus. Okay, and apparently this won't show me my trajectory going past Minmus. I think it's because I already have another body I'm passing by and I haven't upgraded my tracking station high enough in order to get multiple nodes set up. That is okay. All right, this is a really quick burn. So we're going to drop our thrust limiter down and just like that, boom. Now, as soon as we get our flyby of the moon, which should happen shortly, here we are. Oh, where'd it go? Where'd the moon go? That's Kerbin. There's the moon. Camera got reoriented. Okay, and here we are getting our little slingshot maneuver. Goodbye, moon. And then our camera reoriented again. There's the moon. Let's slow it down and see where we are relative to Minmus. Okay, so it's it's pretty far away actually. Okay, so I've got a contract to put an, a satellite in orbit of Minmus. I don't know if this vehicle is going to be able to do that. However, we're going to try and get the polar orbit set up, which is we're kind of already set up for that. We have a lot of Delta V and Minmus does not take much. So we might very well be able to do the altimetry scans, the biome scans, and still situate this thing in an orbit to suffice that contract. And we're going to very lightly get nice and decently close, but far enough away to where our scans will be able to get enough area of effect. Okay, we've got a maneuver node set up to get in orbit of Minmus. Now we just got to do the long trek to get there. So we say goodbye to the moon. Some more, and then somewhere out here, we should run into the little snowball. Uh-oh, what happened to the tank? Oh, crap, this thing is leaking. That's the main fuel tank for the, uh, the main part of the probe. Okay, well, we're gonna be able to get by pretty well with this main tank back here, but it sounds like, it sounds like we won't be able to release the small portion of the probe, which would have had the capability to do, uh, quite a bit more. That's unfortunate. This is why we test these things. All right, this thing does still have plenty of Delta V to get itself into orbit of Minmus, so there's nothing to worry about there. Got a nice round orbit now. Oh, what else did we lose? What is this? Our probodobodyne? No, what happened? Oh, it's short-circuited, so no electric charge. Ugh, why does this keep happening to me? Okay, first things first, let's just make sure the important stuff works. Start scanning the planet, please, or moon. That's what it is, it's a moon. Oh man, that is a really small field of view. Okay, that's what happened, this little thin strip in one orbit. One orbit, we got that. Let's go ahead and speed it up for a couple orbits here. Ah oh, yes, it's only gonna work on the daylight side of the planet, that makes sense. 
or moon. It's a moon, Kyle. Remember, it's a moon. I use a smaller map. This actually refreshes itself. So yeah, this is gonna take some time. Um, why is it not? Why is it not refreshing? But yes, this is very important because our next mission we're going to launch is going to be to send not just a probe to Minmus, but we discovered very recently that the Val 1 is not only capable of getting to Minmus and landing on it, but it can leave and come back. And all I did was tweak the resources on life support. We're going to send a Kerbal here to not only gather some additional sciences in a couple of biomes, but actually do our first surface samples from another body. And that'll be a little test that we can do to kind of make sure we're ready to land on the moon, which is much harder to land on. Minmus, very easy. So we might as well get it out of the way, get it done get some additional science, and at the same time knock out some contracts. And there's no other Kerbal for that job than the one and only best test pilot in our brigade, Jebediah Kerman. This will also probably be the last flight of the Val 1. There might be future Val installments as we move forward, but uh, yeah, for the time being, this will probably be the last time this thing flies. It's had a couple of modifications. Uh, there are landing legs now officially on that final stage so that uh, we don't have to worry about tipping on our side on Minmus like we did last time. Hopefully we can have a nice clean touchdown when we get there. This does have slightly less delta V by less than a hundred or so in total, but that shouldn't be a problem because we had plenty of extra uh, when we had that uh, probe unmanned mission that took this vehicle to Minmus as well. Okay, and we're approaching stage separation. Removing those boosters, and we're gonna take uh, these engines, ramp them up. Probably should apply this to an action group at some point, but have not done that yet. There goes our main stage. And since we're comfortably above the atmosphere, we'll go ahead and open up our little service bay. And then I got a last and final maneuver node set up to finish this burn to get us all the way to orbit. So let's go ahead and finish that. Gotta do one quick stage during this, and then this engine should get us the rest of the way to orbit. Good old reliable Sphinx vacuum engine. The next task is going to have to see if uh, we can get a rendezvous with Minmus, considering its inclined orbit might be a bit of a challenge. Didn't exactly take the time to time the uh, actual launch window here on when I would want to have it be as close to those uh, nodes as possible, so we could be wasting a little bit of delta V here. Okay, we successfully got a maneuver node that's going to get me there via a second maneuver node that's going to redirect us with a little bit of a plane change. And I went too far past the burn marker. Good for me. Okay, a few things just went wrong. Um, first and foremost, I lost control of the engine for a little bit, and as such I burned too far. I'm not sure why that was the case. Uh, we also had a fuel leak in it, which kind of saved me from going too far. So anyways, now I've got a stage. We've got to use a light amount of the fuel in here so I can bring this on back just a smidge. That other part is flying off into space. Goodbye, other part, wherever you went. Oh, there you are. All right, there we go. That's 18 kilometers. We'll go ahead and try that burn. Okay, due to some very poor flying skills on my part, we're on the opposite side of where I originally thought I was going to pass, and we probably used way too much Delta V, so we'll see how well we can manage this when we get there. And right as we've entered the sphere of influence, we actually got a contract complete, which I'm assuming is for that multi-spectral scan. So there's 106,000 right there excellent work awesome and i'm just very simply gonna eyeball this burn here because what we gotta do is go retrograde and then we'll uh burn our way into orbit should be pretty easy relatively low okay we got 1200 delta v left okay so i checked the maths and margins are not going to be super comfortable but they're also not going to be super close so we should be fine here now before we get too carried away what we need to do is take a look at our little bio map that we've completed thus far there's a few strips that obviously uh, obviously haven't been filled in yet but that's okay so i've done a temperature scan of the basins. There are midlands and there are brown midlands and then there are highlands. I'm almost thinking kind of right in this area here. You've got this spot which is brown midlands and then you've got regular midlands. And I'm wondering if I can get close enough to that border. The goal would be to just have our Kerbal EVA and walk to the other one so we could get two biomes of science. So if I put a marker right there, does that show up? No, it's not showing up. Why is it not showing up? Set. There we go. 
Now I've got a landing marker. Pretty hard to tell exactly what's there, but well, it's also not really on our trajectory. Probably should have checked that. Actually, I could aim south of there. Probably a little bit, uh, a little bit more kind of right in here. There's a lot of biomes clustered together right there. I would just have to burn kind of sort of quick. Oh, no time like the present, but we'll just go like that. All right, so there's that first marker that I knew I wasn't going to be lined up with. Use Kerbal Engineer to know how fast the land is coming at us. Just so we're ready, we'll bring the gear out. And then using a zoomed in map over here, I'll be able to see a little bit clearly uh, where those biomes are. And it looks like right now we're kind of set to hit some highlands, even though it's kind of covered up by what hasn't been scanned yet. We'll be a little careful as we get in there, but we're going to try and find a flat spot if we can. Yes, yeah, some pretty rocky looking terrain. We'll do what we can here. Okay, our impact biome right now is set to brown midlands if we check out Flight Engineer on the left, which is the section beyond kind of where I planned on going. Now we're set to highlands. As long as the impact biome says highlands and then I can get it close to where it just crosses into the section that is midlands, I'll know that I'm kind of set to land very close to where the two biomes meet. Okay, there it is. It switched over to midlands. We've got a target on the ground. We can see where we're set to land kind of right there at the base of my landing gear. If I burn a little bit, that will move. We're going to be careful because we don't want to come in too hot and have to really force a suicide burn. But we also want to make sure that we've got somewhere that's relatively flat. And it looks like this is sort of hilly. Coming in nice and steady beauty of having a pilot who can keep this thing pointed retrograde is great. Turn it up a little bit. Nice slow descent now. Looking good Jeb. Looking good. Almost there. And kill it. Just like that. Touchdown. Perfect. And with that light, lovely touchdown, Jebediah Kerman becomes the first Kerbal in our space program to actually land on the surface of another celestial body. It only took us 18 episodes. Alright, first things first, let's get all the delicious, delicious science crew report. Uh, we can go ahead and transmit that. That's good. No usable comms device in range. Hmm. That is probably because our little relay dish is not on the same side of the planet as us. But I think it's headed that way because I think it goes up and over the pole. Yeah, that way. So if I just give it a little bit of time. There we go. Now we're connected. View that. Now we can transmit it. Boom. Get that science collected right away. And we get 15,000 because that's from a new biome. Let's do a temperature scan. We'll ship that along back to Kerbin as well. Keep an eye on our battery. Atmospheric pressure, ooh, 48 science, delicious, 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 perfect. And then yes, we're going to get uh, mystery goo from the surface. Uh, that we will actually keep because we'll have Jebediah get out and collect it. We can go ahead and do an EVA report. We'll have him keep that. Uh, we'll have him store that experiment. And then it says I can do a surface sample from up here, uh, but that doesn't seem fair. So we're going to actually have him get off of the vehicle here and then use his EVA jetpack to gently land on the surface. And whee, bloop. We'll go ahead and collect that surface sample. 120. Oh my gosh. Why haven't we done this before? It's so glorious. And Jebediah is going to do something no Kerbal has done thus far. Going to go ahead and plant a flag leave our mark here so that people know that one playthrough was the first. Jeb's gonna say, holy buckets, it is empty. Indeed it is. All right, well, that's good. Let's go ahead and store the, the data that Jeb just got. I think this is a new report too, just because I'm flying. So we'll take that just in case it is something new. Oh, there we go. Couldn't, couldn't grab onto it. And then reviewing this real quick. Yeah, EVA report. Let's go ahead and send that along its way. Uh, another EVA report just above the Midlands, even though that was just literally him floating. And then surface sample, we're going to go ahead and keep. I need to see if he can grab one of these mystery goos. Observe that one. Uh, oh, I can collect this one. Good. Yes. 
remove that data so we don't forget, and then store it. We still have another one, but I don't want to risk trying to fly this to another biome, because I just really want to make sure, more than anything, that Jeb uh, gets home safely. Now, we can do another surface sample if we go to the next biome. Okay, I'm on the Midlands, it says, when I go to collect science, which means I'm in the green section on the map here, or kind of, you know, pukey green, and then I need to go to gray. So if I just head literally south, I believe I should get to next biome. That's north. If I go pretty much this direction, eventually get there. Gently bring Jeb down and see if we are there. Yes, Highlands. Perfect. Don't need the map anymore. So we will quickly do an EVA report from the Highlands. I don't think I can do one from the air again because, yeah, I'd have to overwrite it. We will, however, take another surface sample, so we'll click that. Okay. Perfect. And then we can go ahead and just make our way back to the vehicle. Went too far. Went too far. There we go. Perfectly lined up. Go ahead and board back up. And we've got a bunch of science now. A ton of science, in fact. 294, just from what we've sent already. There's two surface samples on here, which were 120 apiece, which means we're going to have a good chunk of stuff to spend once we get Jeb home. So let's get on with that. I'm going to rotate the vehicle so that I can kind of orient and know what direction I'm pointed. I believe on this slope, I'm kind of already going the trajectory I need to go. And because we're on Minmus, we should be able to very quickly just burn horizontally once we get up in the air enough. Because it doesn't take much to get uh, up to a decent orbit here. Yeah, bada bing bada boom. Add that maneuver node. Oop, too far. Right about there. Yeah, and look at that. Oh, whoa, look at those sharp rocks and canyons over there. I want to explore that. All right, and then this is a really quick, like, three-second burn to get us all the way into orbit. That was a really awkward camera flip. Okay, let's bring the landing gear in. Should have plenty of delta v 597 i believe the escape trajectory burn has got to be like 200 and something oh, we're nice and equatorial too this is good uh, and then relative to kerbin we're going to want to burn pretty close to the opposite side could be wrong well that's going to pass us by the moon that's cool we don't really want to do that jebediah does not need to visit the moon as well figured out a maneuver node that should comfortably get us to pass by into the atmosphere of Kerbin at 42 kilometers. It's only going to take 273 delta V out of the 597 we have, giving us just a smidgen of margin to spare. Commencing that burn now. Let's take a look at where we are so we don't overcook this. And uh, let's just go ahead and point prograde and we'll keep an eye on the number down here. 200 kilometers, 150 kilometers... 100 kilometers, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40. Boom. Nailed it. Now Jebediah just gets to sit tight for seven days as he waits to return in that capsule that he's probably going stir-crazy inside of. Uh, just to double check a few things so that I don't miss them later, we've walked on the surface of Midmus. That was worth a boatload because of the contract bonuses we get out of the administration plan that we're currently on. We planted a flag on Minmus, that's good. Except successfully explored automated exploration of Minmus. So we did the one to give multiple biomes, I believe is that one, the Minmus probes one, yep. And then we have new strategies for Moho, Eve, Duna, Moho probes, Eve probes, Duna probes, astronaut training program two. This is good because I would like Duna to actually be the upcoming target to send probes to while we work on bringing Kerbals to land on the moon. Goodbye, Minmus. It's been fun. Thanks for all the science. Ah, we've got a landing gear failure. Well, good thing that's not a problem anymore. Jebediah, coming in like a bat out of hell. Uh, is there any science we can double check that we need to do? We could do that second mystery goo. Oh, yeah, we can actually keep it. Ooh, that's not a bad idea. Go ahead and climb down then, collect it. Yeah, perfect. That's a little bit of bonus science. Always good to double check. And it looks like we might be coming down on the dark side of Kerbin, which is not a problem. It just means all you guys are going to see is a fiery ball of death. I'm going to go ahead and burn off the remaining fuel that's in here too, I think, because uh, I'm not going to need it. And I am going to burn a little bit up as well. Up is not really, well, that's kind of the right direction relative to Kerbin. 
want to go a little uppy so I don't get too deep into the atmosphere. 38 kilometers, that's fine. Okay, I should have plenty of control here and battery power. Yeah, so as soon as I ditch this... Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. I forgot I didn't put the uh, didn't put the decoupler in the staging because I didn't want to accidentally decouple this at any point. And just like last time, it's stuck on there. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and get that flipped retrograde. That'll spew off into space. Goodbye. Things are blowing up, but I think it might be. Yep, it's the other vehicle. Okay, that scared me for a second. Never, never want to hear explosions when all this fiery doom of death ball through the sky is happening. So I keep forgetting to pay attention to the ablator because it actually makes a difference in Jaina's Q. I mean, it doesn't make a difference whether I pay attention to it. It just makes a difference whether or not you have enough ablator. This might honestly be the hottest, fastest object that's ever hit the atmosphere that I've sent. Still moving at four kilometers a second and... 40% of the ablator was gone. And right about now, we're actually hitting orbital speeds. Half the ablator almost gone. Now we're passing vanilla KSP orbital speeds. Jebediah just seems totally fine during this whole thing. He's hitting about three and a half Gs, which is not too bad. That's like, you know, a decent roller coaster, I guess. And there we go. All the all that re-entry heating is starting to sizzle off. All right, I think I can stop worrying about the ablator. We seem to be just fine. Oh, hey, look, there's the rest of the vehicle flying in at really fast speeds. I don't know what section of it that is that didn't blow up. Could be the engine. Probably probably easier to manage an engine when there's uh because it can it can handle the heat. I forgot I already deployed the drogue chute. Well good thing I wasn't moving too fast. It looks like we're gonna land Ooh, I hope that's not a mountain. Cannot see anything. Or maybe that's a cloud. Could be a cloud. Oh there's like a little fake city down there because of the mods. I love visual enhancement mods. So so fun. I think this might be a cloud. I don't think it's a mountain. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a cloud. Fingers crossed we land in a new biome so I can get a little bit of extra science we haven't gotten before. I should probably deploy the main chutes. That might be a good idea, seeing as I can see trees. Oh, I seem to have landed in some kind of arid desert biome because that looks like a Joshua tree. Assuming Joshua trees exist on Kerbin. Oh yeah, and there's cactus there, so that kind of makes sense. And I'm just in the lowlands, so yeah, technically probably not any new science here. Let's just... Do Whoa, where did that grass come from? Yeah, Jebediah can't collect any new science. That's okay. We'll have him board up because he's going to head on home right away once the uh, recovery teams arrive, wherever they might be. Oh yeah, juicy, juicy science. Look at that. 325 science earned. 619. We can do quite a bit with that. And because we landed on the surface of one of the moons of Kerbin, Jebediah has reached level 2. Alright, and then before I finish up for the day... I want to take a look at some juicy, juicy things to research. Now, I got a couple options. I could get a little crazy and I could go into the next tier of both types of rockets, the heavier ones and the more efficient ones. I could get the Poodle, which is a really fantastic vacuum engine. Could also get the Mainsail, the Vector, the Mastodon, the Boar. I don't know what the Boar is, but it sounds awesome. Looks like it's a heavy lifter, 1,000 kilonewtons. Of course, the mainsail is better, and then the vector is pretty good too, but it has a lot of vectoring capability. Oh, and then there's the twin boar. Oh, okay. That explains what a boar is then. But I think it might be more in my best interest to actually get bigger fuel tanks. Oh, definitely need command. Okay, we're going to do command modules because this gives us the MK2 command pod, which is the triangular cone-shaped one that holds two kerbals. That'll be a lot safer or these longer re-entries from the moon, it also gives us the lander can. So I can send a mission to the moon of two Kerbals. They can both return in the command pod, but one of them can go and land down on the moon. So we can do kind of an Apollo-style landing where there's a separate vehicle that lands and then comes back up to reboard and dock with the main command pod. There's also hydroponics, which while I don't necessarily need that kind of stuff yet, it might be good to kind of start building a station around Kerbin. Yeah, because then I get the mobile processing lab going up there too. Let's do that. That's very beneficial. Scanning tech actually becomes available after that too. Unfortunately, I am 0.4 science available needed to, uh, to do that. I would love to have 300 as well because then I could do nuclear propulsion. Is there any science anywhere? Not really. Okay, I'm going to go advanced fuel systems. That makes sense to me because that's going to be bigger fuel tanks that I could potentially, if they're thicker ones, which I think they are. Yeah, this is one of the really wide ones and there's an adapter for it. So I could put tons of engines on the bottom of that and make my first stages a lot shorter. That's going to be that's going to be pretty beneficial. And then I have 139 left. I believe, yeah, subsonic flight here. 
is only 90. I'm going to go ahead and do that because it's going to open up. Oh, it opens up a lot. Oh, we get better wings. That's only one. Do that. Yeah, and then these two efficient flight systems gives us the Goliath engine and supersonic flight. Yeah, it's going to give us the Panther, our first jet engine. That's what we're going to need to break that Mach 2 barrier. So this is some good openings that we just got. We'll let these research and when they're finished, I believe we'll be in a good spot to start thinking about how we plan this lunar landing. And then now that I've got some cash, something that has been significantly holding me back has been the size of my vehicle, specifically the max weight that's allowed by our launch pad. So I am going to finally upgrade this now to its final tier to level three. So we'll send in that request. It means I have substantially less cash to work with, but I should be okay based on the things I have. I'd like to upgrade the runway too, but that's gonna kind of blow everything I have left. Now I'm gonna keep this to boldly go one. Is there a to boldly go two that I could do? Oh, so if I upgrade it, it only costs, costs less because I've already invested in the first one. So new biomes will give us 25,000, 100,000 funds when science transmitter recovered from new celestial bodies. Oh, that's different than, than just tier one. Tier one is just new biomes. So this gives more money for the biome and new money for the new planet. Oh, this is this is really good. Yes, let's upgrade that because we're gonna send some probes. Are you sure you want to activate this strategy? It can be modified. Yes, perfect. That did use a little bit of cash, so I gotta keep an eye on that, but we're gonna make it back. Literally the first vehicle we send to Duna will basically more than counter that. Now when I say Duna, it could be Duna or Eve because both of these are have each have their own challenges. Now Eve, technically easier to land on in vanilla. So if I do the probes, plus 400% funds to milestone gains for Eve, minus 800 funds to milestone gains from other bodies. We will get a milestone gain when we do surface samples and plant a flag on the moon. And I don't wanna necessarily lose out on that bonus. I think it's funny the Eve program says plant a flag on Eve and then live there permanently because you ain't coming back, especially in JNSQ. All right, I will definitely do the probes to Eve. I think this should be relatively easy. With a bigger launch vehicle, I should be able to make something that not only puts into orbit a relay satellite around Eve, but then can drop maybe some small probes at the same time. It might be a large vehicle and it might be really expensive, but it's gonna be really, really worth it. Oh, this actually gives 500K, in, oh, half a million in advance. Yeah, you got it. Oh, I thought it advances, oh, there it goes, okay. Okay, we got the funds now, fantastic. Well, then I think it's decided, folks. The next mission is gonna be to send some probes to Eve to gain some much, much needed influx of additional cash while we plan out the actual moon landing for our space program. But until then, I'm Kyle. This has been that one playthrough of Kerbal Space Program, the JNSQ playthrough, and I hope to see you in the next episode. Have a wonderful day.